Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the highlights from the latest fixtures in the Cinch Championship, League One and League Two. Coming up, Dundee United take charge of the Championship title race with a crucial win over Wraith Rovers. Falkirk celebrate their League One title triumph by putting seven goals past Montrose at Lynx Park. And Peter Pollitt scores his first career hat-trick in Peterhead's 4-1 win over Clyde. The weekend's action kicked off at Somerset Park on Friday evening. Anton Dowd's going close to an early opener from a well-worked corner kick. Dean McMaster is a player who has impressed for Airdrie again this season. The youngster going close to grabbing his first senior goal, but well kept out by Joshua Clark. The Diamonds had most of the attacking play in the first half at Somerset. Captain Adam Frizzell going close to making it 1-0, but narrowly poking wide. Airdrie though would make the breakthrough before half time. 38 minutes on the clock when Josh O'Connor raced through and finished beyond Clark for 1-0. The promising attacker with just his second league goal of the campaign. Ayr looked to hit back with a response before the break. Harry McHugh working an angle with his deflected strike well dealt with by Robbie Hemphrey. And it wasn't long after the break before Ayr levelled things up once more. Anton Dowds with tenacious play and a smart finish for 1-1 in the 47th minute. The striker has scored in all four meetings between the sides this season. And just three minutes later, Ayr were in front. A well taken free kick finding the head of Sean McGinty, who guided the ball into the top corner. An excellent start to the second period for the honest men. Chances became few and far between as the half wore on, but Ayr looked the more likely to score. Dowds and Fraser Bryden making their presence felt here, but unable to find the net. Ayr hanging on for all three points after an excellent turnaround. The battle for supremacy at the top of the table had its latest chapter written at Tanadice on Saturday. The home side coming flying out the traps, with Tony Watt making it 1-0 inside seven minutes. An excellent touch and finish, which gave Kevin Dabrowski no chance. And the Wraith keeper had to be sharp on his toes shortly after, this time keeping out a well-struck shot from Louis Moult. The home side were well on top in the first period and pressed hard to double their advantage. Scott McMahon the latest player to threaten the Rovers goal. But arguably Dubrovsky's best save would come from a corner kick. Sharp reflexes required to thwart this header from Watt. Wraith found their chances limited all afternoon at Tanadice. This strike from Zach Rudden going close to hauling Rovers back level. United maintained control of proceedings after the break. Watt going close to doubling his personal tally with this back post header. But the golden chance that United were looking for would arise in the 75th minute. Referee Nick Walsh awarding a penalty kick to the hosts for a foul on Moult. Moult stepped up and wrong-footed Dubrovsky to make it 2-0 to the Terrors. United picking up a huge result in the championship title race. Gayfield was the venue for an important battle at both ends of the table. 
David Gold's acrobatic effort early on, giving Dennis Mehmet something to think about. Dunfermline have had a real upturn in fortunes in recent weeks, and they got the opening goal in Angus on Saturday. Hugh and Otto lashing one home from the edge of the box in the 24th minute. Otto on target for the first time since the opening day of the season. And it wouldn't take too long for the Pars to make it too. How about this for a free kick from midfielder Paul Allen on 32 minutes? Allen also on the score sheet for the first time since early August. It was one way traffic for most of the first half. Matty Todd going mightily close to making it three from inside the box. But the third goal would come for Dunfermline just shy of the break. Chris Kane there to bundle the ball over the line on the stroke of half time. Kane with just the second goal of his lone spell at the club. The home side would begin to show signs of life and attack after the break. Scott Stewart pulling one back for our growth in the 54th minute. A well-timed run and a confident finish from Stewart. Momentum began to shift in favour of the Lichties from here on in. Michael McKenna well kept out by top goalkeeping for Mehmet. And the home side would pull another goal back on 64 minutes. Another corner kick and another bit of penalty box finishing from Stewart. Excellent fighting spirit shown by the team from Angus. Our both kept battling and pushing for a leveller late into the game, but the goal just wouldn't come. The pars hanging on for a vital win on the road. Without a victory in their previous six games, Morton knew that a win would be key to keeping themselves in the playoff hunt. Jack Byrne going close to putting the hosts a goal up early on. The home side were well on top in the early going in this one. Robbie Muirhead forcing another important stop from Callum Ferry here. Morton maintained control of the game after the break. Kirk Broadfoot denied an opening goal by the crossbar from a corner kick. It seemed as though it was a matter of time before the home side broke the deadlock, but Queen's Park's defence continued to do enough to keep the score at 0-0. And the away side almost took the lead against the run of play. Liam McLeish going clean through on goal, but poking just wide on the finish. The opening goal would eventually arrive for Morton on 68 minutes. Broadfoot heading home from a free kick this time round. A first league goal of the season for the experienced defender. And it wasn't long before the hosts would double their lead. A powerful free kick from Muirhead slipping through the grasp of Ferry for 2-0 in the 72nd minute. A 16th goal in all competitions for the powerful attacker. Queen's Park continued to fight for a way back into the game, but were unable to put the finishing touch on any of their attacking moves. 2-0 Morton, the final score at Capilo. Partick Thistle welcomed Cali Thistle to Four Hill on Saturday. The away side going close to opening the scoring when Wallace Duffy's header cracked the crossbar. The home side would begin to create chances of their own soon after. This one from Brian Graham curling just over the Inverness crossbar. Graham would continue to cause the Cali backline bother. This time laying one on for Scott Robinson who was denied by the outside of the post. But Partick Thistle's attacking play would bear fruit before the break. 41 minutes gone when Robinson pounced on a save from Mark Ridgers to make it 1-0. 
a third league goal of the season for the Thistle forward. Cali defender Cami Kerr would find his name in the referee's book just before the break for simulation. The home side kept on top after the break and went close to doubling their lead through Aidan Fitzpatrick. His strike whistling just beyond the post. And Cali would go equally as close to levelling things up at the other end. Kerr's deflected strike flashing just wide of the mark. And Kerr would find himself in hot water on 66 minutes shown a second yellow and subsequent red for a foul on Fitzpatrick. Despite being down to 10, Cali continued to fight for a leveller late into the game, but just couldn't find the net. Partick Thistle securing an important victory on home soil. Now for a look at how things stand in the Cinch Championship after the weekend's action. Dundee United moved four points clear at the top after their victory over Wraith Rovers. Dunfermline's away win at Gayfield moves the Pars into the playoff places. And Morton are up to fifth place after their home win over Queen's Park. Stirling Albion made the long trip north to take on Cove Rangers in Aberdeen. Josh McPake looking lively early on for the away side. Sterling made a good start on Saturday and took the lead on 17 minutes. Kieran offered with an excellent left-footed strike for 1-0. A thumping finish from the on-loan St Mirren forward. But Sterling's lead would last just 5 minutes. Cove striker Rumarn Burrell pulling one back with a tidy touch and finish in the 22nd minute. The striker with his 20th league goal of an impressive campaign. And Cove would go close to overturning the deficit soon after. Josh Kerr sending this one just over the top. But persistence in attack would pay off for the home side on 35 minutes. Another corner kick, with Sterling defender Jordan McGregor turning home at the wrong end for 2-1. Great pressure from Kerr, forcing the unfortunate touch from McGregor. And Cove would go from strength to strength in the second half. 56 minutes gone, when Mohamed Niang picked at the bottom corner with a fine finish. A rare goal from the defensive-minded midfielder. But Sterling would hit back with another goal of their own just two minutes later. Cammy Clark with an absolute cracker to make it 3-2. Game on once again at the Balmoral Stadium. Goalmouth action dried up at both ends until the very end of the game. A serious mix-up at the back between McGregor and goalkeeper Blair Curry making it 4-2 to Cove Rangers. Paul Hartley's side strengthening their playoff bid with a big home win. Quickly, Lewis Muir. Come back by McDonald, drives in, similar position to where he scored from. Going for a similar result, but he goes wide. CJ made his way around the keeper, crosses in, Babbage is there with the header! Into the corner! Equaliser, Kelty Hearts 1, Edinburgh City 1. Nice ball through. Muir is taken down in the box. 
And he points to the spot, it's a penalty. Alfie Babbage, and he finishes Kevin Kelty the lead. Sends the keeper the wrong way, Kelty Hearts 2, Edinburgh 1. Close to equaliser. McCoskey back to O'Donnell. He puts it in, find in. Moore falls nicely for Johnson. Bond corner goal! Johnson wide open on the penalty spot. Bottom corner, Kelty Hearts 3, Edinburgh 1. Alloa hope to get back on track after back-to-back -back defeats as they welcomed Annan to the Rex. The Wasps denied what seemed like a certain opening goal when Ethan Sutherland was kept out by Greg Fleming. But the home side would nudge their noses in front on 23 minutes. Taylor Stevens' free kick hitting the crossbar with Bobby Wales there to tap home. The on loan teenager with his ninth league goal for the Clack Manager side. Annan are a team who are always a threat from set pieces. A corner kick on 40 minutes, seeing Tommy Goss initially denied, with Tommy Muir on hand to tidy up. Muir with just his third league goal of the campaign. Alloa regained control of proceedings after the break. Neat passing play providing Stephen with a chance, with the attacker just unable to finish. Both keepers were required to make strong saves in this one. Lewis Hunter's thumping strike being kept at bay by strong hands from PJ Morrison. And right at the death, it looked as though Alloa would snatch all three points but some last ditch defending from the Galabankis managed to keep the home side out. A point apiece at the end of drill. Aki's knew that anything less than three points would see Falkirk crowned as champions ahead of their late kickoff in Montrose. Regan Tumulty going close to a spectacular opener for the hosts. and Tumulty would again go close for John Rankin's side. A lovely clipped ball to the back post, with the fullback just unable to turn home. Kevin O'Hara continues to be a real threat in attack for Hamilton. The striker causing the Queen's backline bother here, but missing the mark on the finish. Queen of the South would begin to create more in attack after the break. Kieran McKechnie's deflected effort forcing a smart stop from Dean Linus. Aki's midfielder Jamie Barjonas would find himself walking a tightrope late on, as he was booked by referee Ross Hardy. Hamilton went close to clinching all three points late into the game. Jake Hasty with a chance, but kept out by the crossbar and Barjonas would be given his marching orders on 83 minutes, this time shown a second yellow for a foul in the middle of the park. And the away side would look to make the man advantage count late on, Kyle Doherty forcing an important stop from Linus to keep things level. 0-0 the final score, confirming Falkirk as League One champions. For the first time this season, I can safely say we are welcoming the Cinch League One champions onto the park. No longer champions elect. They've sealed it today. Hamilton's draw at home to Queen of the South means that Falkirk will be lifting that trophy against Alawa in May. His confidence will surely grow from that. Mackey sends one in behind. McKeever gives chase. McKeever's through. It's McKeever! Get the champagne off ice! Get that cock popped! Ross McKeever gets the party started at Angus! Tate picks his head up and looks to send Ross on his way. Good first touch. Ross needs support. Rolls it for Nesbitt! 
2-0 Falkirk. Look at the scenes in the away end. The party is really getting underway now. Graham all over him like a rash though and defending well. Now here come Montrose on the counter-attack. Machado looking for the through ball to Kane Hester. Hester's through, it's Hester! And Montrose have got a goal back. A flowing counter-attack. A great ball from Matthias Machado. Hester just using his pace and great composure with the finish too. Ethan Ross on the charge again. He's so good when he gets motoring. It's Ross! Two goal lead restored. Ethan Ross gets his first league goal for the Bairns. It's been a long time coming. Nice control from Mackey. Finds Ross. Ross onto his right. Mackey now finds Nesbitt. Nesbitt! And it's in! Falkirk lead by four goals to one. The champions putting on a show. Champagne football. Yeah, this Falkirk team very much playing with freedom and they could they could get another goal here. It's Morrison. It's saved by Gill. McKeever! It's 5-1! Magical McKeever makes it five in Angus. Smart turn from Nesbitt, slides it through. Morrison could be in here. It's Morrison! And it's just wide. It is Miller. Chops inside. Fires the cross. There's Oliver. Shot deflects. Here is Agumen. It's still Agumen. Agumen! <laughs> what did we just say? Alfie Agumen gets his first goal since October. That's cheaply given away though by Montrose. Here's Ryan Shanley as Falkirk look for number seven. It's seventh heaven for Falkirk on the road. This is no cherry on the cake. This is the jewel in the crown. Falls down by Emsley. Skips away from him though. Miller to deliver. It's a decent ball. There's Agumen off the post. Miller on the overlap. Miller charging down the left. Miller into the area. Fires it across. It drops for McGinn. And that would have been something special from the skipper. The ball falling kindly for Stephen McGinn. Here's a look at the latest standings in Cinch League One after a busy weekend of football. Falkirk celebrated their league title triumph with an exceptional away win in Montrose. Cove Rangers moved up to fourth place after their big home win over Stirling. And Kelty Hearts gave their survival chances a huge boost with their home win over Edinburgh City. Peterhead welcomed Clyde to Balmour on Saturday afternoon. The home side being awarded an early penalty kick as Peter Pollitt was fouled in the box on 11 minutes. The midfielder would step up and tuck away the spot kick to open the scoring. Pollitt has been hugely impressive since joining the Blue Toon in January. Much of Clyde's survival hopes lie with Jordan Allen's goal-scoring prowess. The striker denied an equalising goal by a good stop from Stuart McKenzie. Having conceded one penalty early on, Clyde would find themselves in bother again in the 25th minute. Lee Hamilton this time penalised for a foul on Hamish Ritchie. And once again it would be Pollitt to take the spot kick. And again the midfielder beat Brian Kinnear from 12 yards. The keeper getting a hand to it, but the strike just too powerful. The Blue Toon were playing with plenty of confidence in this one. Conor O'Keefe going close to making it 3-0 with this powerful drive. And Peterhead's dominance would continue after the break. A corner kick on 53 minutes, dropping to the feet of Pollitt, who completed his hat-trick. It was a first ever career hat-trick for the former Aberdeen and Dundee United man. But Clyde would show signs of life in attack shortly after. 61 minutes on the clock when Robbie Leach pulled a goal back for the bully wee. 
A cracking finish from the talented attacking midfielder. Clyde attacker Jay's Cabia would find his name in referee Duncan Nicholson's book for this foul in the 75th minute. And Cabia would be in bother again late into the game. The Irishman sent off for a second bookable offence. Peterhead would go on to rub salt in the wounds just before the end. Joe McKee adding his name to the score sheet in the 90th minute. An excellent afternoon all round for the Blue Toon. Healy receiving it from Newton. Is it on the near side? Tries to slip it back inside. Newton back to Healy. Oh, he does Gets well himself there. into the penalty area. Goes for goal. Uh, saved by McHale. Shepard, he's gone for it. Oh, oh it's at the bar. What an effort, that's oh, a great save. Uh, Easton. Huey. Gets the ball in. Deeds the delivery. Clowns out there! That's a brilliant goal. One nil! That is superb play from Jack Huey. Good tackle from Healy, but the break of the ball comes for Jones. Dangana. Surely. Oh, oh. dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That's Lion. Lion! Oh, well intercepted by Miller. Troughton. And the shot from Shavoni beaten away by McHale. Healy. Dragging it back. Lion! Yes! He got the effort there. Come on. Thomas McHale got his body in front of it, but he couldn't stop it going in the back of the net. Lyon scores for the second week in a row. Two to at least five. Against Booth. He gets past Booth. Sends it aside. And Doherty. Oh, oh the effort's blocked. Could it be McManus? McManus! Oh, oh the effort's comfortably saved, really, by McHale. That was a big chance to kill the game off. That would have been game over. This thing stand out and not completely out of this. Spartans welcomed Forfer to Ainsley Park on Saturday afternoon. Forfer Stuart Morrison receiving an early booking from referee Chris Fordyce. Chances were few and far between for large periods of this one. This turn and strike from Josh Skelly, easily held by Blair Carswell in the Spartans net. Forfer defender Andy Munro decided he would be the next to have a pop. His long range effort not too far away in the end. But Forfer would find themselves in bother not long after the break. Morrison shown a second yellow and given his marching orders for a foul in the 56th minute. And from here, Spartans would look to make the man advantage count. The home side winning a penalty on 65 minutes for a foul on Cammy Russell. Mark McNulty stepped up to the plate for the hosts and wrong footed Mark McCallum for 1 0. The experienced striker getting his second goal for the Edinburgh club. Spartans would continue to attack late into the game in search of a second goal, but had to settle for 1-0 in the end. An important result in Spartans' playoff push. Oh, Telling me you got to watch his selling, he's in 11 yellows. Uh, yep. Ewan, so. He's got to behave. Oh. Oof. Good save. Oh. Well done, Denneran. Yeah, he's... Oh, no, oh, uh, Dino Hawkshaw. Oh, Dino. It... No, I just know, know your oh. face. Hit it. Oh! I think, it, I think it clipped the post, actually, in this side. Too easily brushed off the ball there. Yep. But it's under pressure here. The Queen's uh, kind of... Through. Oh, I've got a tackle in here. Oof. Long throw again. Oh, it's a penalty. Eh? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear.
for Martin Newton against Billy Nickett. Now he scores. Good ball, eh? Yeah, he usually scores with penalties. No much doubt there, I don't think. Again, 21 taken down in the game now. Can Tom get a ball in here? He can. Oh, James Dolan. He has oh, just got to up. score. He just it's just a hit and hope there. Yeah. Now, can James Dolan get one? Yeah, he does day. as well. Keeps it in. Run it, run and it. There's two or three here. Darren ah. Lang! It's Darren Lang! And it's a bang, bang, Darren Lang! One each. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Lang. Great finish. Fantastic finish by Darren Lang. And we've got a grandstand finish here at Steer Park as Darren Lang brings us level with Bonnie Rigros. I think it's going to be Hilton to swing it in. And it is. Hilton swings it in. And it's headed by Newbury. Touch on the box, Ruth! Oh, and a great save there by Jameson. But Jameson heads it down. But Michael Ruth picks it up just outside the 18-yard box. Michael Ruth still got it. Plays a great ball through to Friendly Gray. Gray, still got it, great. Crosses it in. It's headed and just by. It's good for somebody to get their head on it. Deals with it. Anderson, the quick throw. And it's just dispossessed. And a great save by Jay Hogarth. Good header by Linus. And it's O'Reilly into the Dumbarton box with a shot. But it goes wide. Way by Dunlant. Only as far as Meekin, who helps it going? Brown. Still got it, Brown driving forward. With Brown with the shot. It's Buchanan's inviting. It's just top poked away and it's a shot. And it's a good block. And it's away. And a foul on Lennon. Headed by Dunlin. Lennon. Lennon still coming forward. It's crossed in. It's Michael Ruth with a turn. Ruth, another turn. He chops inside the out. Turn, Ruth. Calipini tail on the shot. Linus, still inside. Just keeping the game alive. Gray. Gray still got it. Crosses it in. Ruth is blocked. Goes all the way to Crichton. Crichton keeping it alive. Trying to play it to Gray, but goes out for a Dumbarton throw in. Now to check in on the latest standings in Central League 2 after a full card of weekend fixtures. Stenhouse Muir could clinch the league title with a win next weekend after their draw with Dumbarton. Spartans' home win over Forfar keeps six points between themselves and fifth place East Fife, while Bonnie Reg Rose and Stranraer's 1-1 draw moves both sides three points clear of bottom club Clyde. 